I tried recreating this animation in a free software and I think I learned a lot. But let's take a look at who created this. It's made by Marcus Seljak and this is his website, looking pretty professional. And then there's me, and I'm not professional. But with some trial and error and following these six steps I made, I got pretty close and I think you can learn a lot from it too. But before I could even dream about recreating this, I had to take a close look at the animation. And if we take a look at the original image I have here from his animation, we could see that it was composed of this middle section looking like a super ellipse object that we can see here in cavalry. Now you might think that this is just one super ellipse. Problem is that the sides move independently. The good thing is that these four circles are actually also super ellipses. So what I did was that I instead of adding one super ellipse in the middle, we could go ahead and add four super ellipses forming one super ellipse in the middle. So I went ahead and added it and right now it doesn't really look like a super ellipse, but changing the push value to the same value displayed in the animation, you would see it actually perfectly matches. And I only really had to change the radius here to now have a perfect match of that, not in terms of styling, but in terms of shape. And now I could go ahead and duplicate this shape three times to ultimately form the base uh, of the animation. Uh, so I moved the shape over and duplicated it three times and we can now see this shape in the middle forming, indicating that we've done something right at least. But I was getting quite bored of this gray color so I decided to add some styling. First of all adding a background shape uh, consisting of just a rectangle that I moved to the back of course and then copying the color using the eyedropper tool. And now we can move on to the super lip shapes where I essentially just went over to the fill tab and disabled that. And then inside of stroke, I enabled it. And then I reduced the width down to two to get as close to the original as possible. And then again, copying the color from the center here. And then I did that for all four. And we now had this center piece of the animation. And I did play with the idea of it being convex hull, if you know what that is but I could see that there was sort of this rectangle shape exposed underneath the original four ellipses. So I did add a rectangle shape and just scaled it up until it matched the edge here of the top left super ellipse. And you could sort of see that it wouldn't be clipping over it. And we could now move that rectangle shape beneath all the super ellipses. And then we could go ahead and change the fill color to this yellow. And now I realized I should actually enable fill on these super ellipses and then just copy the color. And when I did that for all four, you would now see that we sort of had the same result as in the original and we could revert the push value back to 2.42. And at this point I was ready to check this off the to-do list and we can move on to movement. Now the layer panel here was getting cluttered up so I renamed the shapes and we can now go into the top left and you'll see that they sort of pulse back and forth between this push value. So what I did was I added a keyframe at 2.42 and then moved the 90 frames to the right and then reduced the push value down to a minimum of 0.5 and then once that was done we could then go ahead and make it back to the original value, which would be 2.42 at frame 180. And now you'll see this linear animation, yes, but it was creating the right movement. So I highlighted the keyframes and then pressed shift one to have a simple ease in, ease out. Now at this point, I stumbled upon the first problem, which was at some point in the animation, it sort of spiked up like you'd see here. And this wasn't looking pretty, but I decided to keep it for now and solve it later. And now we could move on to basically creating the same animation, but slower for the other parts. So I created the same animation for the bottom right, but basically just made the whole thing double length. And this would create a sort of 
independent side so they wouldn't be pulsing at the same speed so you could see it would be like this and at this point it popped into my head that I could change the cap style or I later found out it was actually the join style to round and suddenly the problem was fixed and it was looking really nice on the edges here so I could kind of cross that problem off the list now before continuing with the video, if you want to know how I looped this animation, make sure to check out my video on that topic. But before moving on, I would like to point out that these two, the bottom left and the top right, I found would be moving at the same speed, so we only really had to make one animation for that. And this was sort of an in-between speed of the two other super ellipses, so I sort of just repeated the process and then when it came to animating, I just animated one and dragged that push value over to the other's push value. And that would copy the animation. And you can now see they were moving quite like in the original. And we could move on to the next, which would be dynamic text. And by that, I mean the four text objects in each corner of the lip shapes. But before I did that, I wanted to create this rectangle shape. So I added a rectangle shape by dragging over the original image, like so. And then I basically just took this rectangle shape and then moved that over to the my own version and then moved this rectangle shape down beneath the square. Then I removed the fill and enabled stroke. And then I changed the color to yellow and then reduce the width down to the original two that I've used for the other objects. Now to get this exact effect on the corners, I decided to increase the corner ranges and then to get this sort of straight line, I had to enable chamfer. And now you could see it would be matching the original look. And to create this bottom part, I decided to create a rectangle, which might be counterintuitive, but bear with me. And then we'll scale it up to exceed the big rectangle with the chamfer and then move that on top of the big rectangle and then go into mask where we could then take the big rectangle and take that as a clipping mask because now we would get something that looked quite similar to the original. So then we could just go ahead and re-enable the rectangle shape, the big rectangles visibility. Then I added some text at the bottom here and before creating this graph in the bottom right, I wanted to tackle these text objects. And that would be controlled by this push value since they kind of show what the push value is. So I added some text and then basically did the same styling as before. And not only did I want this to display the push value, but I also wanted to say for example, for the bottom left, I wanted to say BL push standing for bottom left. Now I tried setting it to BL push and then equals. And then I tried to see if I could add some value after that, or maybe I could set a and, but nothing was working, not even a generator. So I just added a value generator instead. And in here, luckily, we could add something called prefix which is just what we needed for this, where we could then type in our bottom left push equals, and then we would have the number. And for the precision, I reduced this, and the same for the padding. And now to control this value, we obviously want it to be corresponding of the actual push value. So I disabled the live mode, and then went into the bottom right, or the bottom left um, super ellipse, and then dragged that push value into the number. And right now it only said two and not 2.42. So I increased the precision to two. And now hitting play, we would be able to see that the text was matching the actual push value of the super ellipse perfectly. And all we'd have to do now was just to repeat this process for the re remaining three. Now I did go ahead and reorganize the layer panel a bit and rename the text. But then it was just a matter of repeating this process for all of them and just dragging in the push value and then replacing the connection. And now we could hit play to see that each of these push values would be matching the text objects perfectly fine. And now we could check that off the list. And before we could create this 
these ropes and this cross, we would have to tackle the problem of these rectangles sort of forming a graph. And I think they represent the push value of each of these super ellipses. So one of the first things I went ahead and did was recreate one of these four rectangles. And after that, I moved it over to my replica of his animation. Then I added it to a duplicator. And in here, I selected a different distribution mode, the linear one. And then I selected a count mode of four and then set the size down to something quite a bit small. And at this point, we wanted to have each of these rectangles represent the push value one by one of these ellipses. Now, before changing the heights of these duplicators, we needed to align it properly. So I selected the original rectangle and added it to a line behavior, where I could then change the Y behavior. So it went like this. And now it was sort of behaving like a graph and I could move that a bit down. And now if I try to change the rectangle shapes height, you will see that it works properly like in the original animation. Now for controlling these duplicates of this rectangle, I thought it could be maybe smart to use the original values we already have from the push value. So I tried to search for a value array and I didn't know this was a thing. But what you might imagine it could do is it could add these four different values to their own sort of spot in here. And then we could assign that value array down into the rectangle shapes, rectangle size and then height. And indeed, I found out that this would actually work. And I just added three more values. So we now had four values. Then I went into one of these super ellipses and dragged their push value into the connect to value zero. And even though it might look like nothing really was happening, you could actually see something down at the graph. And now it's just about repeating this process for the other three, except you wanted to choose a new value. And once I had done that for all four values, I could go ahead and zoom in on this graph. And you would actually see that they were moving, but they also had a really low height. So we sort of had to change that and scale it up in a way. And that I did by going into the original rectangle and then adding an expression to the size. And then basically just multiplying that by a number I ended on a value of seven. And now you could see that if we played the animation, it looked quite nice, like in the original animation. So now at this point, we could check that off the list and move on to the crosses. Now what I initially did to try to solve this problem was that I added a simple line. And then I went ahead and copied the position of the super ellipse and then changed the color, and then did a few more adjustments such as the rotation, and also change the length back to 200 since it was that length and then a width of two. And then I duplicated it and changed the rotation to minus 45. And then I connected the super ellipses push into the basic lines, line length, which I found here. And then right now it was really short. So I had to add an expression to mitigate that problem. And I ended on multiplying this by around 85. And at this point, it was essentially working. And I thought, let me just do that for the other line as well, the exact same process. But now if you take a look, it's completely symmetrical in the movement of these two. But if you look in the original, they're sort of delayed one is moving a little bit in front of the other. And for that reason, I thought it kind of would make more sense to make this all be in a duplicator. So I decided to delete all of that. And then basically add the basic line the same way before but add a duplicator to the first basic line, then create a grid of two by two, and then move that over to my version of this animation and then change the shape rotation to 45. And then adjust the size to fit the actual animation size. And at this point, I realized maybe just maybe could we adjust these lines length with the already created value array we used for this graph. So I tried just dragging in that value array. 
And right now it obviously didn't work because we had to add that multiplier of 85. But now we could actually see all of these lines and their length being controlled by these push values. Problem was the displayment or the alignment or whatever it's called was sort of skewed. So I tried reversing it and changing all of these settings, but I realized I couldn't really change anything from the value array since that would change the graph as well. So I tried enabling draw debug animation and now we could see the problem. So I tried changing to flow rows and that seemed to do some of the job, but it still wasn't quite right yet. And I kind of was puzzled on how to do this. I tried adding some sort of behavior or anything to the direction or changing the ID of the shape, but nothing really was working until I tried changing the shape rotation. And I remembered you can rotate the whole duplicator. And once I did that by minus 90 degrees, suddenly it was working perfectly. And that was really satisfying. And then at this point, I could just duplicate this duplicator and then change the shape rotation. And suddenly we had this cross using only one line and then two duplicators. So at this point, I could change the shape time offset, which was sort of offset one of these lines, so that they were matching the original animation. And I realized it had to be a negative value for the delay to be correct. And now it was working really nicely. And all I had to do was really just change the color of these crosses. And we could now move on to the last thing. And looking at the animation, you'll notice these ropes sort of stringing out from the sides and connecting to the super ellipses. And I tried adding this rubber hose element that you can in cavalry, and then sort of align it to the corner and then trying to reduce the length and then also move it to match the edge of the super lips. And then of course, reduce the width down to two as the other things are. Now problem was I didn't really know how to actually connect it to the super lips. I tried dragging the endpoint down into the top left um, super lips. And that, of course, didn't work. And I was kind of lost on how to do this. I also tried hand animating the end point to by changing the pivot point, and then going 90 frames ahead and then changing the pivot point again, and then copying the keyframes from the first keyframe. And now you'd see that even with some easing, the similar easing, it didn't work. And I tried changing the easing in here. But even this just the easiest part of the three ropes was difficult to get right. And at this point, I sort of just accepted that I couldn't get this to work right. And I had to delete it and say that was not completed. But Nevertheless, this was the final result I came up with. I don't really know how he did the grid behind the thing. Feel free to comment if you know how he did it. And with that, I just want to say thank you for watching. And if you want to support me, you can subscribe or you can even buy me a coffee. Links in the description.